Molly, you've got the you've got the floor. Thank you so much, Nika, for inviting me to be here. And um, I want to say what an honor it is to talk about David, someone who was a constant inspiration to me and a constant inspiration to all of us. So many people have said so many brilliant things about his work with Occupy, about you know his intellectual contributions, about the fierce solidarity that he always had with anyone who was an underdog, anyone who was being unjustly attacked. That I want to talk about two other qualities about him. I want to talk about David's generosity and I want to talk about his sense of mischief. David was one of the most profoundly generous people I've ever met. And I mean this in multiple ways. You have this guy who's like this super genius intellectual, you know, anthropologist, economist who wrote in a way that allowed any reader, whether or not they had ever been to school, whether or not they had ever gotten some fancy degree or ever, you know, been in some elite circle, any reader could see themselves and could see their problems in his work. I have friends who worked at call centers who, after they read bullshit jobs, they suddenly found someone expressing the sort of visceral dread they felt going into work every day and wasting the precious irreplaceable moments of their lives. When I think about his generosity too, I think about this time that I hung out with David on Portobello Road. He loved, you know, antique shopping, as Astra said. And when he walked those streets, he was friends with every single type of people, like every single, you know, working class guy at a stall, you know, David knew and David shared a story with. And I remember there was this, this book, this copy of the Arabian Nights that I, I loved and I was, I was too broke to buy. And he just like, he just bought it for me, like out of the blue, you know, cause he, he liked giving gifts. He liked giving gifts. He liked getting gifts. He liked that capacity to feel joy and wonder at the world in this most unexpected ways. Now, when I think about David's sense of, of mischief, right? Here was this, you know, eminent man who had this like smile, like this dorky little boy who was seeing all of the ridiculousness of the world, all of the pomposity, all of the silliness, all of the terribleness that didn't need to be there. And he was just kind of laughing at it. And he was saying, you know, ha ha, I am smart and I can see my way out of this bullshit trap that we've woven ourselves into. And there's something better and more beautiful that we can have. I think about that sense of mischief when um, he invited me to this uh, squat once uh, in London that uh, had a big sign in it that was like, no cops and no journalists. And I was a journalist. <laughs> and um, and I, I remember telling him that and him just laughing that like little, that just laugh at the, absurd, the absurdity of everything. I think about David's willingness to pick a fight in the cause of justice, but never be embittered or doctrinaire by it. To always keep in mind these possibilities for a better world and to deal with everyone with this remarkable openness that inspired people to be their best selves. The world is smaller for David's loss. It is smaller, it is a loss to us all. And there's no consolation really in that, except that I think that we need to try to live in those ways that he so embodied best. That sense of questioning all of the pompous bastards, that sense of mischief and of laughter, and that wild, wide open generosity and that greed for life and it's every aspect. And that's what I take from David. That's what the reason, one of the many reasons I'm so happy and so lucky to have known him. And uh, that is what I hope to embody in my own life in tribute to him. Thank you so much for, for having me. And um, thank you so much, you know, all of you guys. <laughs>